Hey guys, you seem to like my last video that I made on React and performance. And in the comments, someone mentioned peer components, which are a great way, if used correctly, to optimize uh, your components as well. So I want to talk about those and how to actually use them. But first, I want to show you an example of where they might be useful. So right here, I have a very simple React application. Right here is a parent component called app, and all it is is a counter. So my state here, I have count zero, and then when this increment function is called, I update the state to increase the count by one. And uh, right here, I'm displaying the count, and then my button here is when I call the function, when I click this button, this plus button, increment is called increments. And I also have a child counter. So this is a child component that I'm rendering underneath, and child component is just about the same thing except um, it also console logs whenever it renders and it's a regular component here and it's uh, counting and it counts by two instead of one. So let's look at what this looks like in the browser. So right now I have my parent component right here and my child component right here. So there's a small problem with how this is set up. Now there's nothing technically wrong with the code, it's just how React works where every time I hit this plus sign, right, we're incrementing the counter. And uh, this is the parent, right? But notice something down here. This is me console logging, rendering. Uh, it rendered 16 times the child component. Um, even though the child, so we're console logging it. Um, even though the child component, I didn't push the button on it. I was only pressing the button on the parent. So how React works is it'll re-render all the children underneath it. So that can be a problem. As you're seeing, here's a possible case where there's really no need to re-render this component because nothing really changed, right? Look, as I'm incrementing this, nothing's changing with the child right here. Um, now when I click this, it should be re-rendering. These are good renders. So what peer component helps you do is help with wasted renders. So under child component, instead of saying react.component, I can say react.peerComponent. And these are almost identical. The only difference is there's a function called should component update in React. And basically that says, hey, here are the state, here are the props, here's the context. It gives you some information and it's like, should I update this component or re-render this component? So what peer component does is implement this method for you so you don't have to write it and uh, peer component checks whether the state or the props change. So you notice how nothing was changing with our child counter, so we didn't want it to keep rendering. So peer component handles this for us and says, hey, the state hasn't changed, the props haven't changed, don't re-render. So now, notice how when I hit this plus sign, we only ever render the child component once until, see, as till we actually start using the child component in the rendering changes. So plus plus plus. So pure component can be really nice to save renders because rendering is expensive. Now how does this do this? So what it does is it does a shallow comparison um, of your props and your state. So it checks whether your states and props have changed. Now a shallow comparison means it just is it very fast and it just checks one, the references of your objects. So uh, if you have two objects, A, and const b. These objects are not equal because, at least with a shallow comparison, because they are two different variables or they're referencing two different places. Um, but for example, a oops, a would be uh, equal to a if you did a shallow comparison. So objects, functions, arrays you have to be careful with because uh, they are actually checking the references of those. Um, but for example, numbers and stuff, no problem. You can just do a regular comparison. Okay, so this is well and dandy. So why don't you use pure component for all, right? Pretty much all your components because pure component seems to be saving renders, which is really nice. And it is actually much cheaper to do a shallow check to check should component update rather than rendering the whole thing. So it is saving in this case. So I want to show you guys a little quote from 
the creator of Redux, and he says uh, they can help your app when placed strategically, but just making every single component pure can actually make your app slower. Trade-offs. So he's talking about pure components and whether or not to just use them everywhere, because um, we just saw how powerful they can be. And it can actually, there's some places where they can actually make things slower and you have to be careful and you have to watch and look at your code um, and monitor how many times it's rendering and the time. So I'm going to show you an example where things could go wrong. So here is uh, my application right here and I let's say I want to pass in a uh, an options dictionary and I want to pass it in to say what my uh, how how much should my initial increment uh, increment by and uh, what the symbol should be here. So I'm going to get this from the props. Oops. So I'm going to say this dot props dot options dot symbol. And here I'm going to say this dot props dot options dot increment amount. So now I want to pass in a options object to my component here. Oops, I meant to be, yep, so this is the child. I should rename this child counter. Okay. So then in my app.js over here, I want to pass in an options and I'm going to say right here that the symbol is going to be plus plus three times and the increment mount is going to be three. So this is almost, you know, we could make this the same thing I had before, let's say. So my symbol is now plus plus, my increment amount is two for my child component. So let's come look at, look at this. Um, options, did I call it options? No, they call it options, so options. Okay. So now if I hit plus, right, this is working the exact same. So we've rendered three times, let's clear the console. Well, what's happening? We're now rendering every time with our component, right? Even though we're using pure component, and this is our child component here re-rendering, even though this, we're just incrementing the parent, what's going on? Um, if So this is a case where if you're not careful, you can actually uh, make it worse because not only are we checking should component update and doing a shallow comparison, but we are also re-rendering. And the reason for that is we have an, this object that we're passing in. So remember how I was talking about um, a little bit earlier, how shallow comparisons work with objects. So here we're creating a new object every time the parent is rendered. That's why it's not working. So this can happen in your application. So that's why you need to be careful, look at your code, see when it's actually rendering. Because if you're not careful and haven't used a lot of peer components, you could be doing this places. So now to remedy this, we could set move the options up into the state. Now you may be also thinking, hey, maybe I can say const options down here as well, right? But this is also another place where you can get into trouble because it's going to create a new options every render, exactly like before. So let's show you this is break. Oops, we forgot to actually pass it in. Options. So this is going to have the same problem as before. So incrementing the parent, still rendering. So we need to basically keep reference to this object and only change it when this object has been changed. So now I'm going to move it up here into my state like that. So now if I do this.state.options, we're going to keep reference to this object the whole time. And so now Notice we only render one time. So perfect, that's what we want to do. Another thing that's very common, and this is actually something that I used to do a, a lot, um, is, uh, so let's say we wanna pass in a function, maybe like on increment. So we wanna do something when we increment. So I'm like this, and I'm like console.log increment called. And let's come over here, and we just broke it again reason for that is we're creating a function. This actually creates a function. So we're creating a new function every single time. So how do we fix this? You move it up here and you're like on uh, child 
Oops, child increment. I want to console.log and just say console.log increment happened or you know whatever you want to do here on child increment. So now we're not re-rendering because we're passing the same function here and we're not creating a new one. So be mindful when you're using peer components to not pass in um, things that are constantly changing even though they're the same thing, right? So the value was the same, but the reference was changing so it was causing it to keep re-render. And that's where peer components can be actually slower than regular components. So that's the only thing to be mindful about when using peer components. And personally, this is why I don't just use peer components all over the place is until you really need the performance increases, I just use regular components and then I go in and re it's very easy to go back and refactor things that need performance increases later. And usually regular components are good enough. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I hope that helps you. Definitely take a look at peer components and consider adding them where your components are re-rendering a lot and slowing down performance.